If you've ever wondered what subjects are and the subject removal process when it comes to real estate contracts and how they work, this video is for you. In today's video, I'm going to give you six things you need to know about real estate contract subjects and subject removal. Hi, I'm Jimmy Brockett with Oakland Realty and welcome to the Inside Track where I bring you the answers to the questions you didn't even know you had about real estate. Before we get going, if this is your first time here, please hit subscribe so you can get notifications of these videos directly into your inbox. Don't forget to watch through the very end for the bonus section. And finally, I've included any links to information I cover in this video in the description box below. Okay, subject, subject removal, what are they, what are they for, and how does the process work? Well, here we go. When you submit an offer to buy a home, nine times out of 10, it will come with subject. And in this video, I'm going to explain what they are and how it all works together. Subject removal is an important process during the real estate transaction that you need to be well versed in to ensure that you are safe and protected when buying a home. In this video, I'll go through some of the frequently asked questions to make sure you're fully prepared to write and submit an offer safely. Okay, number one, what is subject removal? Well, the subject removal period is an amount of time in which the buyer works to satisfy the conditions, also known as subjects, that are listed on the accepted offer for a particular property. Subject removal works as a great safety net for buyers as it allows the buyer to perform their due diligence related to the subjects that were accepted, such as reviewing strata documents or the title search for the property. If the buyer is satisfied and approves all the subjects listed, then they will proceed to remove subjects and hand in the deposit so the deal can now become firm. These subjects are listed in the terms and conditions sections of the contract and purchase of sale and must be agreed on by both the seller and the buyer. Number two, what type of subjects are there? Well, the most common subjects you'll see are things like subject to obtaining satisfactory financing, approving the property disclosure statement, receiving and approving an inspection report, uh, approving a title search, or approving all the strata documents if it's a strata unit. Now I read those in plain form, but they will be written in much greater detail on a contract of purchase and sale. For example, a proper financing subject will list the interest rate, the term, the amortization that must be obtained in order to proceed with removing the financial clause. Additionally, while those subjects are the most common, an offer can be subject to anything that makes you feel more comfortable committing to when buying a property. A good example of an uncommon subject will be receiving the last six months of utility bills or subject to the sale of your current home. Typically, the hotter the market, the fewer subjects a seller will be willing to accept. And in a very hot market, the seller may try to negotiate for a subject free offer. To make your offer more appealing, you may want to attempt to satisfy the sub subjects prior to writing an offer so that you can show the seller that you are actively trying to remove subjects in advance. For example, you can read the property disclosure statement and the title search beforehand and state that you are satisfied with those documents, therefore you don't need to list them as a subject on the contract. In a very hot market, many buyers also spend money on pre-offer inspections to make themselves more competitive if they get into a bidding war. Number three, how long is subject removal? Well, a typical subject removal period is seven days long. This allows you to organize all your affairs and complete your due diligence to meet the subjects that you've listed on your initial offer. However, there are also subject free offers, two day subject removals, two week subject removals, or any amount in between those. The time really greatly depends on each situation. The amount of time that you offer to complete subject removal depends on a variety of factors such as how hot the real estate market is in your area and how many offers you are competing against. Keep in mind that time is not your friend with subject removal, as the banks, inspectors and or property management companies likely aren't open on weekends or stat holidays. So if you're thinking of shortening your subject removal period because you're in a multiple offer scenario and are trying to make your offer more appealing, make sure you consider all the external factors and that people who rely on to satisfy your conditions might not be working over a couple of those days. If you're not in a multiple offer scenario, try to negotiate for a longer subject removal day, even if it's by a day or two, to avoid the risk of not being able to remove subjects and the whole deal collapsing. Number four, what if I don't remove subjects? Most common question is, will I lose any money if I go through the whole process and not end up removing subjects because either you can't or you decide not to? Well, the answer depends on how the contract is written, but most likely not. 
Typically, there is a subject removal period, and then the deposit is due within 24 hours of removing all the subjects, or upon final subject removal. This means that if you decide not to remove subjects because one or more of the subjects can't be satisfied, then you would not lose any money as the deposit has not yet been paid. Again, in a typical scenario, the deposit is only due if you approve and choose to remove the subjects. The deposit is then due and the deal becomes firm. Now, typically the deposit is usually 5% of the purchase price, but could and is often more and will be held in trust by the buyer's agent's brokerage. The deposit will then form part of your down payment, and the purpose of it is to work as collateral to compensate the seller in case the buyer doesn't complete the deal. Number five, how does the process actually work? Well, here's a typical example of how it might go. Monday, you put in an offer with a buyer's agent and it's accepted. Your offer is subject to financing, subject to inspection, subject to receiving and approving the title search, and subject to receiving and approving the property disclosure statement. The subject removal is one week's time. So from Monday until the following Monday, you begin working to remove all the subjects. You hire and schedule a home inspector to come by at least two days before the subject removal date. You also notify your mortgage broker that you have an accepted offer and have them begin the official financing approval process. And your agent obtains all the documents, including the title search, the property disclosure statement, all the strata documents for you both to begin reviewing. You also follow up on any questions or concerns you may have with the listing agent. Subject removal date. You have two options, remove the subject and hand in your deposit and the deal is now firm. You do not remove subjects because you do not approve one or more of the subjects and the deal collapses. Meaning, if you weren't satisfied with the inspection report, you do not need to remove the subject and you do, not, you do not need to pay the deposit. And number six, can you get an extension to subject removal date? Well, you can ask for an extension, but that doesn't mean that it's gonna be guaranteed by the seller. In order for an extended deal, the seller and the buyers both have to sign an addendum to the contract that's stating that you both agree to extend the subject removal date, along with the new date specified. As a buyer, if you ask for an extension, then the seller can reject your request to extend mod or modify the extension date and possibly request compensation for the extension or approve the extension as is. If the buyer and seller cannot come to agreement regards to the extension, then the buyer has the option to either remove subjects as is or not remove the subject and collapse the deal. So there you have it, six things you need to know about subjects and the subject removal process. Remember, each deal is unique and using subjects can affect the buying process, especially in a hot and fast paced real estate market like Vancouver. Working with a savvy realtor is essential to leading you towards a successful deal. If today's video led to more questions or you'd like to chat more, please don't hesitate to reach out. I'm always happy to have a coffee and a chat. I'm loving all the comments, questions and feedback and ideas of subjects to cover. So if you have something, please post it in the comments below. And as always, thanks for watching. Subject removal, this video is for you. I'll go through, I'll go through some see. How does the process work? Well, in t well, here we go. When you submit an offer to buy a home, transaction that you need to be well versed in to ensure that you are safe and protected when person. What is subject removal? Well, the subject removal period, also known as subjects, these are on the listed, also known as subjects. These are on the listed, related to, to the subjects that are accepted as much as review such those subjects I've written out below statement subject to receiving all the uh, and must all be attained in all of that are the most common an offer can be subject to anything you need to feel comfortable comfortable with the process especially in a hot and fat pit fat